Deep in the desolate march of Bloodwind's spoil lies an old, forgotten sepulchre. It is believed to contain a powerful magical weapon wielded by a legendary hero of the eons past. Based on nothing but rumors and tall tales of raving lunatics, a small warband of Scions of the Flame, led by Krastos Tyrannos, decide to venture into the march in search of the fabled weapon. After many days of grueling journey, they discover the location of the sepulchre. It is not abundant, however. The surrounding area is guarded by ghostly figures of the Night Haunt. The undead guardians, led by an explorer of Shaish, described by the locals as old rattlebones, will force the Scions to fight for the right to loot the grave. What's up everybody, I am Xerxes, you're in my war room, and today we are doing a narrative Warcry battle report, in which Science of the Flame will confront the Night Haunt. Full warband lists are in the description below the video. To win the scenario, Science have to destroy 3 out of 6 magical seals represented by objective markers. They have three turns to burn them and thus undo the magic binding the Night Hunt to this place. In the meantime, the Undead Guardians will do everything in their power to prevent that from happening. Both parties divide their forces and enter the staging area as the Gore Moon rises, bathing the battlefield in the colors of crimson. Gore Moon's gameplay effects increases the value of abilities by 1, up to the maximum of 6. Science enter the battlefield from the north. Krastos, Brazen Champion and Inferno Priest set up between the old ruins and the rocky mound. Fireborn and Immolator stand closely behind them. Both Initiates and one of the Fireborn remain in reserve, scouting the surroundings for potential traps. The Night Haunt split into two groups and enter the battlefield from the south. Old Bones, Dreadwarden Black Soul, and two Chain Rasps occupy the southwester corner near the ancient slabstones. The second group, that consists of a Grimgast Reaper and Glaive Wraith Stalker, set up in the southeaster corner between the two statues. During the hero phase, both warbands roll for initiative. Scions get two doubles and two points of initiative. The Night Hunt also gets two doubles and two points of initiative. After a roll-off, the Night Hunt decide to keep their wild die, whilst the Scions decide to add theirs to their pool of singles, thus seizing the initiative. With a loud battle cry, the brazen champion rushes towards the seal between the rocky outcrop and the sepulcher, immediately putting pressure on the night haunt's left flank. Scion's aggressive approach doesn't remain unanswered. One of the chain rasps glides towards the brazen champion and swings its rusted mace. Needing 5 or above to hit, it rolls 3 dice, scoring 1 solid hit with 1 6, and dealing 2 points of damage. It's nothing but a bruise for the champion, so he laughs it off. Inferno Priest rushes up the stairs to get a better vantage point on the other flank. Dreadwarden Black Soul silently approaches occupied Brazen Champion and strikes swiftly. Needing 5 or above to hit, he spends one of the doubles on a Chilling Horde ability and rolls 4 dice, instead of 3. With two sixes, he drives his ghostly blade through the champion's torso, dealing massive 8 points of damage. The champion is bloodied and definitely not laughing anymore. Krastos runs towards the sarcophagus to examine its contents. 
But before he can do anything, one of the chain rasps charges towards him to prevent him from defiling the resting place. Immolator approaches one of the seals and prepares to burn it. Seeing his first target, the stalker rushes towards the Inferno Priest, keeping her at the glaive's length. But since she's armed with a staff, length of the stalker weapon is not a threat to her. Seizing the opportunity, the Fireborn approaches another seal. Feeling an imminent danger, the Grimgast Reaper flies across the battlefield towards the Fireborn, preventing him from controlling the seal. The reach advantage given by the Reaper's scythe may prove to be problematic for the Fireborn. Old Ruttlebones is the last one to move. He glides towards the two seals that are the closest to him. Scions control only one seal at the end of the round, and it immediately gets destroyed by the Immolator. Both warbands roll for initiative. Scions get one double, one rather useless triple, and one point of initiative. The Nighthaunt get two doubles and two points of initiative, therefore seizing the opportunity to make the first move. Scions decide to save their wild die, whilst the Nighthaunt convert double threes into triple threes. Nighthaunt's scouting party, that consists of three chain rasps, enters the fray through the northwestern corner of the map, near the old ruins. Two initiates and a fireborn approach from the east and hide behind one of the statues, waiting for the chance to jump on the closest seal. After finishing their flanking maneuvers, Scions seem to be in a better position. However, Nighthorn's mobility and ability to raise fallen comrades might prove to be crucial in defending the Sepulchre. Dreadwarden Black Soul strikes first. Using the Chilling Horde ability, he attacks with four dice. Needing fives to hit, he slashes his blade across the champion's chest, dealing six points of damage. His second attack is blocked by the near-death brazen champion and deals no damage. On the other side of the battlefield, the Inferno Priest sees her comrades sneaking behind the statue and decides to occupy the stalker in front of her. She strikes with her staff. Using triple as a double, she activates the onslaught ability. Needing fives to hit, she attacks with four, not three dice. Having difficulties because of the Stalker's ethereal form, she deals only two points of damage. Her second attack is as light as the previous one, dealing another two points of damage. Seeing the Immolator within its grasp, one of the scouting chain rasps rushes towards him to prevent him from supporting the champion. Krastos, seeing his struggling underlings, grows impatient, and he swings his massive Zweihander at the Chain Rasp before him. Needing threes to hit, he rolls four dice, dealing only four points of damage as his sword rebounds off the pillar behind the Chain Rasp. Krastos swears loudly and swings again. Dealing six points of damage, he splits Chain Rasp's skull in half. In the meantime, another Chain Rasp swings its mace at the Brazen Champion. Needing fives to hit, its first ham-fisted attack fails to connect completely. But the second one does not. Three points of damage is enough to smash the Champion's face and remove him from the battlefield. Screams of the fallen champion enrage the fireborn as he reaches for his bomb. Using the available double fours, he tosses his firebomb towards the reaper. The bomb reaches its target and Grimgast's robes burst into flames as it suffers five points of damage. The fireborn immediately closes the distance and swings his weapons. Needing fives to hit, he rolls four dice, and with two sixes, he deals eight damage, 
sinking his pick in the undead skull and sending it back where it came from. Seeing all this, one of the chain rasps performs illegal second activation because I forgot to mark his previous one. Back to the order of business. The emulator strikes at the chain rasp that's blocking him. Needing force to hit, he rolls four dice. Dealing nine points of damage, he pulverizes his enemy and rushes towards the Dread Warden. He doesn't free himself for long, because another chain rasp immediately closes the distance. The first initiate finally decides to leave his hiding place and approaches the seal. That doesn't go unnoticed, because the stalker decides to break away from the combat with the Inferno Priest. It is enough to reach the initiate, so it strikes with its glaive. Needing force to hit, it rolls three dice and barely scratches its target with one point of damage. The other Fireborn also decides to go out of hiding and support the Initiate. All the Rattlebones immediately moves towards the endangered seal, and using the available triple, he brings back the Chain Rasp that was previously defeated by Krastos. The Risen Chain Rasp heals 4 points of damage. The last Initiate decides to join her companions. The newly arisen Chain Rasp attacks the Initiate that was previously scratched by the Stalker. It swings its sword and needing force to hit it rolls 3 dice, dealing 2 points of damage with its first attack and 3 points of damage with the second attack. The Initiate has 2 nasty cuts but is still standing. The last Chain Rasp moves in to support the Dread Warden. At the end of round 2, Scions control one seal, which is destroyed by the Fireborn. It's time to roll for the initiative again. The Night Haunt gets two doubles and two points of initiative. Scions also get two doubles and two points of initiative. Night Hunt used their remaining two wild dice to convert both doubles into triples. Scions convert one double into a triple and add one to their pool of singles, thus seizing the initiative for the last round. Round 3 and victory will be resolved with an intense fight for the control of the seal in the eastern part of the battlefield. But if the Scions are able to create openings near other seals, they can increase their chances of victory. Will the fiery fervor of the Scions prevail, or will the Night Hunt summons let them hold tight control over the seals? Scions begin the round with a bang. The Immolator uses the triple to activate his Inferno ability. A wave of flames erupts from his body and engulfs nearby enemies. Dreadwarden receives the full impact of the wave and receives 4 points of damage. Both Chain Rasps receive 1 point of damage each. After that, he immediately disengages and goes for the Dreadwarden. Hoping to remove one of the summoning units from the battlefield, he strikes with his fists. Needing force to hit, he rolls 4 dice and deals 4 damage, breaking his target's jaw. Dread Warden is severely wounded, but not even close to being taken down. Science gamble didn't pay off. On the other side of the battlefield, Stalker swings his glaive at the severely wounded Initiate. Needing force to hit, it attacks with three dice, scratching the initiate for one point of damage. Second attack is more solid. The stalker sinks its blade into the initiate's neck, and by dealing three damage, it removes him from the battlefield. Hearing another companion die, the fireborn runs around the corner and tosses another bomb at the stalker. This time, however, 
is more careful not to hit his companions and completely misses the target. He continues his run to support everyone else at the seal. A slightly singed chain rasp that supported the Dread Warden takes a swing at the Immolator. Needing 5 to hit, it rolls 3 dice and deals 2 points of damage. It's a solid hit, but it packs no real punch. Immolator shuffles to the side slightly, and the Chain Rasp's second attack misses completely. Battle for the seal becomes more heated as the Initiate aims a flaming mace at the Stalker. Needing 5s to hit, she is supposed to roll 3 dice, but for some reason there is an extra die in that roll. The first hit only scratches the Stalker, but it opens up for a second much stronger attack. So let's just forget about that second crit, it's not there. The Initiate deals 6 points of damage as she cracks open the Stalker's skull and removes it from the board. Seeing this blatant cheatery, the Chain Rasp swings its sword at the Initiate. Needing force to hit, it rolls 3 dice. A well-performed thrust deals 3 points of damage and is followed by a no less accurate swing that deals 2 points of damage. Two solid scars will serve a stark reminder that you should not cheat. The Inferno Priest, being unsure of the outcome of the battle for the seal, decides to join the fray. Extoller, being equally angered by the cheating initiate, aims at her. Needing force to hit, old Rattlebones rolls three dice. The first swing stuns the initiate for three points of damage. In his second attack, old Rattlebones drops his bell on the initiate's head and dealing two points of damage, he pounces her into the ground. And then he uses the available triple to summon one of his minions that was defeated in the previous turn. The decisive strike belongs to the Fireborn. If she can remove at least one of the Chain Rasps, the Scions gain control of the third seal and win the battle. Both undead are injured, so the chances are high. Feeling the pressure of the situation, she swings at the newly risen Chain Rasp. Needing force to hit, she rolls four dice. Her blades find the mark and she removes the Chain Rasp's skull from the rest of his body by dealing eight points of damage. Using the momentum of her first attack, she swings at the second Chain Rasp. Her Chris sinks deep into the Chain Rasp's eye socket as she deals massive ten points of damage, erasing the undead from the existence. Not being aware of what's going on on the other side, one of the Chain Rasps moves towards the Immolator. It swings its maze clumsily. Needing 5s to hit, it rolls 3 dice and deals 1 point of damage, adding yet another bruise on Immolator's back. Loud cheers break out by the eastern edge of the battlefield. Hearing his underlings cheer, Krastos eagerly swings his sword at the Chain Rasp in front of him. Needing 3s to hit, he rolls 4 dice, dealing 4 points of damage with a weak swing that is followed by an equally ineffective thrust. Krastos is definitely not used to fighting ethereal enemies. As his imminent doom approaches, the Dread Warden decides to take at least one more enemy with him. He thrusts his sword. Needing fives to hit, he rolls three dice. His thrust reaches the Immolator's neck, dealing eight points of damage and leaving a nasty open wound. Second thrust fails to connect, since the Immolator, driven by pure instinct, jumps away saving his own life. Science, being in control of the third seal, destroy it right in front of old Rattlebones, and watch his figure fade away. The Guardians are no more. Krastos can finally check his bounty that he was searching for for so long.
So this concludes today's battle report. Thank you for sticking till the end. Hopefully you found it entertaining. If you want to check out how I made the board or painted the science, the links are on the screen right now. So, that's it for today. Like, subscribe and extol that bell for the glory of the almighty algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one.